Printing time. Scan all of your negatives and get ready to spend lots of money. Yeah. If you don't know what song that is, congratulations on being young. Yes, sir. I'm getting a big old print made. And uh, I think this is going to be a fun one. You might even say it's going to be tons of fun. Tons IQ. That's right. We are uh, getting a big old print made of a shot I took recently on my, uh, my most recent on location video. Uh, photographing a delightful little liquor store called Houston's Liquor at dusk and um, getting this bad boy printed up two feet by six feet. And so I'm going to take you along with me as we go through each step of the process to get this thing finished. And let's start at the beginning with step one. I need to bring my negative in for drum scanning. And I'm doing a drum scan because uh, drum scanning is the Cadillac of scans. It is the cream of the crop, the top of the line when it comes to scanning film. And I want to make sure I get the best possible quality out of this negative. It ain't cheap, but you got to do what you got to do. So I'm taking it into uh, Aztec Imaging here in Irvine. They are experts on all things scanning. Now this negative, once scanned, is going to yield me a gigantic TIFF file. So Aztec is going to give it to me on a flash drive. Once I have that flash drive in hand, I'm going to bring it back to the office so that I can get started on. Step two, prep the file for printing, is normally what I would say right now. But unfortunately, we ran into our first snag. So uh, I got the drum scan back, put it on the computer, zoomed into it. The sharpness and resolution is insane. It's absolutely incredible. Um, the amount of detail that the drum scanner can pull out of a negative, I, it blew me away. Couldn't believe it. But unfortunately, we just couldn't get the colors to come out perfectly. Um, we're having issues where the blue tones uh, were coming out with very, very strong hypersaturated green channels on it. Uh, the sky never looked quite right. Uh, the guys at Aztec were kind enough to do a second scan. They rescanned it. Um, to see if they could get the, the colors a little bit better, but we just couldn't make it happen. I did some research and apparently that's a, not an uncommon thing with drum scanners. Inverting the colors and, and removing the orange color cast on the negative, uh, sometimes it doesn't get it quite perfect. Drum scanners are excellent for transparency film because there's no color inversion required and it's not removing any color cast, but um, color negative film seems to have a little bit of a hard time. So I can't use the file. But, you know, the show must go on. So I went ahead and rescanned the negative myself uh, on my Epson V750 scanner. Uh, I did a technique where basically I taped the negative to a piece of ground glass to keep it real taut and flat. And then I suspended above the scanner bed using some shims. Worked well for me before. Figured I'd do that method again. Now, it is definitely not as sharp as the drum scan. No doubt about that. But with some smart sharpening applied in Photoshop, the sharpness on the Epson scan uh, still looks pretty damn good to me, so uh, I'm okay with that. So it's unfortunate drum scan didn't work out uh, this time around, but uh, I think I'm just going to save drum scanning for transparency film instead of color negatives. But now we can actually do step two, prep the file for printing. For real this time. So I'm going to take this 16-bit TIFF, which I scanned using Silverfast AI Studio. And of course, I made color and tonal adjustments there, but I'm going to bring this TIFF into Photoshop first to clean the dust. And uh, I've learned from my foolish ways of the past to clean the dust in Photoshop, not Lightroom. Cleaning dust is much quicker and easier in Photoshop. So I'm going to clean the dust there. By the way, the dust shouldn't be too bad because I utilize the ISRD function on my Epson, which dramatically reduces the amount of dust on the raw scan. Once I clean the dust, I'm going to bring it into Lightroom to do my final color and tonal adjustments. Once I have my colors and tones finalized in Lightroom, I'm going to export it out of Lightroom as a 16-bit TIFF. Open that in Photoshop where I'm going to apply sharpening. Uh, I like to utilize Smart Sharpen. I've gotten the best results with that. Then I'm going to resize the file to 24 inches by 72 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Then I'm going to send that file off to my local lab utilizing an FTP server. And in a few days, it'll be time for step three, get this bad boy printed. Now I do all of my printing through Pro Photo Connection in Irvine, California. They do phenomenal work. 
uh, and they actually ship all over the place. So no matter where you're located, I recommend giving them a try. And this big bad machine here is a ZBE Chromira Pro Lab printer. And unlike most printers, this utilizes no ink whatsoever. Instead, it creates photographs using light. A roll of photosensitive paper is loaded into the machine, of course in complete darkness, where the digital file is exposed to the paper using LEDs. Then the paper goes through all the usual chemicals, developer, stop bath, fixer, just like in a traditional darkroom. And what comes out the other end is a true photographic print. Now this is a lot different than inkjet printing. Inkjet prints basically spray ink droplets onto white paper to create the illusion of continuous tone, whereas what comes out of this Chromira printer is a true continuous tone print. I pretty much always prefer to get this type of print made, which is known as a C-type print, over getting an inkjet print made. Now don't get me wrong, I love me a good inkjet print on photo rag paper, but there's something special to me about a print that was created with light because light was used through the entire process. I used light to expose the negative, I used light to scan the negative, and now I'm using light to actually print the photo. Now the work that goes into creating a print using one of these machines is absolutely incredible. Before printing the final 24 by 72 inch print, the technician at ProPhoto Connection goes through a meticulous process of calibrating the machine to make sure it's gonna come out pristine with no unwanted defects. But in the course of watching this process, I was blown away by how much expertise went into this. The technician operating this machine knows what he's doing. And that's why every time I get a print coming out of the ZBE, it looks phenomenal. When I watched that 24 by 72 inch print coming out of this machine, I was blown away, man. I mean, the colors are excellent. The sharpness is awesome. The blacks are deep. It's continuous tone. There's no ink droplets. The whites are crisp without it looking like just naked paper. I mean, I can't get enough of it. And it was incredible to see the whole process start to finish. Now, before I gave him the go ahead on the big 24 by 72, I got what's called a proof made. And a proof is basically a small version of your print, so you can analyze it to make sure the colors are coming out correct. So, at ProPhoto, I looked at this proof, and I analyzed it, and I hmmed and hawed, and mm, yes, mm-hmm, yes, colors are looking good. Very, very nice. Excellent. Okay, let's go ahead with the full size. Now, the print that came out was stunning. And uh, that's a huge milestone in this whole process, getting a good quality print. But we were by no means finished. With the print in hand, I had to make my way over to the next vendor for step four. Get this beast mounted and laminated. Careful, 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 careful. Oh, Jesus. So I had my guy mount this print on three quarter inch gator board, which is uh, rigid yet incredibly lightweight. Now in lieu of glass, I had my mounting guy apply a luster lamination over the top of the print. And much like glass, that will protect the print against UV damage, uh, fingerprints, moisture, all that kind of stuff, but at a fraction of the weight of glass. You can imagine a piece of glass this big would be pretty heavy. So by doing the laminate instead, uh, I can save a few LBs. Now I did a luster lamination to take the gloss out of the print. Uh, I had this image printed on a Fuji Crystal Archive pearl paper. And I love pearl paper because it is, uh, kind of iridescent, looks almost backlit. It picks up light really well. Um, but the downside is, is that it's ultra high gloss. So by putting the luster lamination over the top, it kills the reflections off and I get a much better look. Now I need to sign and number the print. Ugh, this part is always so stressful. Never comes out quite as perfect on the print as it does on the scrap paper, of course. All right, now that it's signed and numbered, we're ready for step five, framing. For years now, I've been taking my artwork to Solomon Art in Fountain Valley, California for all my framing. And you know, as an artist, I think it's important to develop a really good relationship with a local framer because you're gonna be handing off this print to them in the final step of the process. You gotta make sure it's someone you can trust to take care of it properly and get the job done right. But the framing process itself can sometimes be a little overwhelming because there's just so many options in terms of frame and mat combinations. But since this print was gonna be utilizing a float frame with no mat, my options were relatively limited. So I went to the float frame section of the display wall, picked out a bunch of frames, and then I always make sure to check it against different parts of the print. 
I want to make sure it accents the print without distracting from it. You know, it's a fine line between a frame that complements the print and one that's so matchy-matchy that it kind of distracts from it. I eventually found this beautiful gray-toned float frame. It's kind of a warm gray. And uh, pretty much as soon as I saw it, I knew that was the one. So I had them get started on the order. And fast forward a week, it's finally here. It's done. And look at her. She's glorious. I'm just so happy. Man, this feels good. I think this is a cause for celebration. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is satisfying. Not the, I'm, not the beer, I'm not, I mean the beer is, but I'm talking about the print. You know, I know I sound like a broken record and I've covered this in a previous video. Um, try not to repeat myself too much, but uh, this, Getting a big old print, man, hanging on the wall. This is something else, man. Not to get all cheesy on you, but this, this is food for the soul, man. It feeds your soul. And that's important in life. You got to do things that, um, you know, they, they give you that feeling of accomplishment, of achievement, of you created something that's, that's important. And for me, getting prints made, that's where I find that, that sense of satisfaction. And you know, the thing I really like about prints is like, a, this is, this is how the, the picture's supposed to be viewed, you know? It's not supposed to be viewed on a tiny little screen. That's such a shame. I, I shoot a big 6x17 negative. It's got all this incredible detail, and then it, it's that big, and you never really get to appreciate it. This is how it's meant to be viewed. You can walk up, you can examine every last little nook and cranny, um, really soak up the character of this building. You can even read all the potato chip bag labels. It's just, this is how it's meant to be viewed. But more than that, I don't know, man, there's something real special about having a, a tangible thing hanging on the wall. It's like, I can walk up, it's real. It exists whether the electricity is on or not. It's like power outage, hard drive crash, iPhone battery dead, it don't matter. I can view the picture. It's hanging right there and I get to see it in person. You gotta get out and get some prints made. Go out and, and spend some money on some prints. I know it's hard to do. It, it's hard to pull the trigger on it because it costs a lot of money and it's like, it's hard to get yourself to do it because you're not buying a new toy. You know, it's like, I can spend money on a camera. That's fun. It's like, it's a thing I can use. But this to me is sometimes a better investment. You know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do something for you mentally that a new toy won't. So get out there and get some prints made. Even if it's not big like this, get some 8x10s, hang them on your wall. I think you'll be surprised how much you enjoy it. But as always, thanks for coming along with me on this journey. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys like seeing the whole process start to finish. Um, this is the first time I've done a video from start to finish. Capture, taking the picture, scanning, printing, hanging on the wall. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that process. Get out there, get some prints made, enjoy them. And I'll see you guys next time.